Hey y'all, welcome back to the Pecan Bloat. You know, I thought we would kick things off a little bit different today. I grabbed my latest Project Home DIY and I think we should open it and do a project to kick off this lazy Sunday morning. Um, I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee real quick. You run, grab whatever your preferred beverage is. Uh, some of y'all, I know it's time for mimosa. It's mimosa time. Me, I'm gonna go for a cold brew. Okay, uh, this is Project Home DIY. If you don't have a project to do, if you don't have your Project Home DIY, watch. This is gonna be a great opportunity for you guys to get to know, see, experience this home decor do-it-yourself box. Uh, it's an OG. Been around, I'm, I mean, I feel like as long as I've been around in subscription boxes, uh, I like it because you really can make it as elaborate or as simple as you want. And they send a whole myriad of things. They have an amazing Facebook group that is like super interactive and has a really strong community. It's monthly at $49.99 and they do offer prepaid discounts, meaning if you subscribe to several months at one time, you pay less per month, which is really cool. Free shipping in the US, and if you use code PINKENV30, you get 30% off your first box. And Project DIY focuses on quality, one-of-a-kind home decor sent to you with everything you need to complete your project. You can join their exclusive and fun Facebook community once you're a member. Projects ship around the first of every month with easy to follow instructions. And so this is one of those ones where you can skip if you need to, if you like know you're traveling or things are gonna be too hectic, or maybe you've gotten behind on your projects and you just wanna be able to catch up. Everything's really easy. The communication is easy. The customer service is great. Like I've reached out and asked several different questions. Um, this won't have it. I'll run and get it in a minute. But in your first kit, you get this little bag that has like basic supplies you'll need. Like a, a little square sander, a hot glue gun, a stain, paints, paint brushes, a tray. It has all sorts of stuff that you'll need. So you get that base kit in the first box. And then every month after that, you get a kit that looks like this. So it's going to have this guy here with instructions. Then it has everything you're gonna need. Oh my gosh, it looks like we're making a towel ladder. So a ladder that you throw your dishcloth over. I need one of these for my outdoor kitchen area. I have one for the indoor kitchen area, but I we keep dishcloths, like real cloth dishcloths, at our outdoor kitchen area. And so, but there's nowhere for them to go so they always fall to the ground. We're gonna build this and put this out there and I'll show you my outdoor kitchen area. It's nothing to write home about, literally. I took the old kitchen sink that was in our kitchen when we gutted that area. I just took that outside, put it on a base and now it's an outdoor kitchen. This is why I'm like, look, look at this right here. There's several different sayings, um, I mean, look. So literally, Yesterday was the San Antonio annual backyard chicken coop tour and we host every single year. Every year I tell the girls, let's go on the tour so we can see everybody else's coops. And every year they're like, no, we don't wanna see everybody else's coops. We want everybody to come here. So this is wildly appropriate for me. So in here we have our long ladder legs, our rungs is that what these are called ladder rungs that go in here twine Ooh! oh are we making beads i'll pull the instructions out we might be making a, a bead kit as well and this oh i'm starting to feel like maybe there's more to this kit than i realized and then she actually sent cloths that's awesome yeah oh my gosh how brilliant so this one says 100% cotton, and it looks like this. This will look really, really cute, that little outdoor kitchen area. It's painted black and white, so this is gonna look great. And then this guy, voila. And it says, machine wash cold. Yes, please, and thank you. 
What did you guys do this weekend? Did you do anything fun? Like I said, we did the uh, annual backyard chicken coop tour and it was so much fun. We never know what the weather's gonna be. Sometimes it's like shockingly hot. Sometimes it's cold and raining. We had like great weather this year. So it made it a thousand times more fun. So yeah, we're making the ladder. We're making a sign and we're making the beads. Also, I'm noticing on here, the towels have a, the stencil on them. The stencil that's here is on here. So it looks like we're gonna be stenciling a few different things. I would have never even thought to stencil these guys. Okay, the tea towel ladder sign in beaded garland, 45 minutes plus dry time is what you can expect. Up here at the top is a QR code you can scan to get video instructions, but there's also written instructions on here as well. Also on the Facebook group, you can see how people have hacked their things into different things. Like not everybody does theirs the same. I'm gonna be honest, I love natural wood. So some of this stuff, I'm gonna leave a little more natural than probably other people would only because that is literally my house is filled with natural wood. I'm actually gonna use this as my base to not lose my beads. Okay. Step one, split your beads into colors you want to paint them. Add each pile to a separate bag. Put a few drops of paint of your choice in the bag. Seal the bag and roll the beads around until they are covered. If you add too much paint, you will have to add more beads to soak up the paint. If beads aren't covered, add more paint. Dump out beads on paper or parchment. Allow them to dry. Rotate them to sit on the whole of the bead, and if desired, repeat for a second coat. What is your weather like right now? We are, I mean, truly just at that perfect point where we're waking up and it's 50, and it's maxing out about 75 each day. Some rain, some sun. I mean, if I could paint my perfect weather, this would be it. I, we can go swimming, because it's warm enough to go swimming, but the evenings are so cool, you put on a light jacket. It's patio weather, but tell me, where are you at? Are you still stuck in snow? Or are you in Florida and you're like underwater right now? <laughs> or what? Tell me what you got going. Do you need to be inside working on a craft like this because you can't go outside? So I went out and got some paints from my shed. I was going back and forth and could not decide what colors I wanted. I picked out Cotton and Raven and Olive. So this is what I'm going to, since it's my outdoor area and my outdoor area is black and white, I wanted to honor that, but a touch of green because we do have everything very earthy out there. It's not very stylish, it's earthy. So this is my colors I'm going with. I just got like those fold over sandwich baggies, like literally they're called sandwich bags. And I'm gonna give those a try. Uh, this is my tray that came, this all came in my welcome kit. So this is all stuff that they provided to me in that very first box. And so I just went and pulled those out of my art kit. This is the paper that was in the box. I think I'm just gonna use that for my drying. I don't know why I wouldn't. Heck yeah, so I just took that paper, I just taped it to the desk, and that's gonna be my drying area. So I'm gonna go with the white, ooh. What do we want to do what? I'm, mm, white for the littles, black for the mediums, and green for the bigs. Let's do the white first, just to test it out. Okay, that was really easy. I just put several squirts in here. I had no idea. I think I did four like droplets. I put a few beads in, rolled them around. I guess it's okay if they have a very textured finish. I mean, mine are gonna have a very textured finish. Let's see. I don't know, hers are pretty perfect. Oh, oh she did her little beads white too. Oh, but she did one, two, three, four colors, rotating the color on the big beads. Oh, I like that. I'm gonna be real honest, this is not my forte. I will destroy and gut a bathroom, but you give me a small DIY project like this and I have the tendency to ruin it. So this, we're gonna be putting this to the real test with me here. <laughs> so mine are very textured. I guess that's okay. I'm gonna move them so they're not touching. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, let's just keep going. 
I have to admit, I don't know that I hate the texture. It's actually kind of cool. So there is an entire YouTube video I could be watching. For the record, I've looked at none of it. I just dove in. I probably should watch, because like I said earlier, not my forte. Oh, those other ones already feel like they're kind of starting to dry. Mine look nothing like hers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna have to, I just, look, look, y'all have to, you just, why are all of mine so textured and like super thick in one spot and then like naked on another spot? Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> I am not gonna get hired anytime soon to be like her DIY girl. Very cool. Okay. Put your own little spice on and use it in your kitchen. Oh yeah, she just reminded me, like these aren't like generic stencils you're gonna go get at like Hobby Lobby. She has these custom made for this box. So every time you get a stencil, and I've actually, I think I've got three packs of stencils, I save them because they're reusable. They're custom. We really covered in ink, but this is literally all you do. Okay, she's doing exactly what I did. She put the beads in, she rolled it around. That's a pretty darn simple way of painting beads. Okay, and they look like a mess right now. But let's get them standing on there, on the hole. Okay, she said they may look like a mess. Mine look like a mess, for sure, for sure. <laughs> okay, her video so far is very easy to follow, like super easy. She did say though, like make sure to get these standing up on the circle part. Yeah, mine are starting to dry really quickly. That's kind of surprising me, but I guess also good. She did recommend doing two coats, so I'm about that. We may do that. I was over here thinking I already messed up, but she said texture, they're gonna look a bit like that. So, color two. It's gonna rinse and repeat that exact same process. Y'all, mine are so crazy looking. Listen, okay, thoughts. <laughs> it's a really good thing that I am one of those people who are just really chill about results. It's actually impressive that's the first time I've done that. Second, I noticed that she is actually using like a very structured bag. So like when she pulls hers open, she can open it, the walls of the bag open, and she's just pouring them out. Whereas this bag here does not do that. Like it's grabbing the paint, it's smearing as they come out. I'm trying to think if I have another type of bag around here that I can use because the bag I grabbed was the wrong type of bag, come to find out. She's like, save your bag so you could reuse it. Y'all, I am making such a big mess. We're gonna have to like start fresh, but I do think I'm gonna do two coats because I can see where there is some of the brown popping through. If they dry and they can do a second coat, then it would look better. So let me show you where I stand right now. Don't quit my day job, right? <laughs> um, you know, good thing this is just gonna be at my house for me. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'll whip it out at the end but y'all are totally getting an insider's peek at me. I will demo walls, I will cut wood, sand wood, I will paint on an extension ladder, but when it comes to doing intricate things well, that's not me. I would like to know, surely I'm not alone. Are you the smaller arts and crafts type or are you the big demo type? I wish I was more smaller arts and crafts. This is so therapeutic. I mean, I have no idea what this is gonna turn out to look like. I also don't like overwhelmingly care because I'm gonna brag to everyone that I made it and be super proud. And I just, oh, I chill. Like, like what else would get me to just sit here? Just sit here and paint, watch a YouTube video. I'm gonna have something in the end, not demoing a wall. I get cuts on my knuckles and I get nails and I'm exhausted and I'm sore. I need to do more of this. This is what I need to learn to embrace. I think us as a culture need to learn to embrace. 
What colors are you decorating for? Are you decorating for spring yet? And if so, what is your palette? Are you a more neutral, like the black and whites with a pop of color, or maybe browns or golds? Or are you more of the pinks and blues and greens and yellows and oranges and all the wildflower colors? Comment and tell me what, what you're pursuing or are going to pursue in your spring color palette. Okay, must be getting better because by far my black ones look the best. They look actually like really good. They're not real textury. They're not real thick. Like they actually look like hers. Also, um, at this point, her hands are perfectly clean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So she said, let these dry for about 20 minutes. Don't forget to rotate them, which I have noticed like you do have to, or they do, you know, dry and stick to the paper as would be anticipated. And for those wondering, yes, the paint did very easily wash off. <laughs> oh dang, this one's already dry and it looks good when you actually do it correctly. It looks pretty stinking amazing. Step two, paint wood sign in towel letter. It has the minute marker. We're gonna dive, dive into the video. And the instructions here say paint the wood sign in towel ladder with either paint or stain of your choice, which she does provide a stain. Want a more modern look? Use bolder, solid colors. Want a more worn look? Use less paint and sand to, on spots. The style is up to you on how you want to finish this. Ooh, so here are a few inspirations I pulled from her group wall. So these are different ways that people have done what they've done. I love them all. I can totally see the different styles in each person's inspiration and design. I know for a fact I'm putting the sometimes you just got to say cluck it and walk away. Uh, the other option I was looking at is many have eaten here, few have died. Uh, cooking is not my expertise. If you've been around here at any time at all, you know I am all about like crock mills and HelloFresh and Marley Spoon and just Green Chef. I, those those are my more my speed. But I mean, I have to say, no one has died. Now for the big question. I think I'm leaving the frame raw. We have raw wood. I embrace raw wood, so to change this feels weird to me. But I think I'm gonna paint the background a color. So do I want to go where it coordinates with this is the real question. I think I'm gonna go with the green and paint this green and put the white, cluck it on top. Would you go coordinating with the beads or would you go pick one of the other like nine other colors I have to choose from and just bring in something new. Okay, this is gonna be the background of that. I think I'm gonna go full on Raven for the ladder. Everything out there is black and white, so I think it'd be so cute. I also think the towels would look so cute on it. But what if, what if, because I like natural wood, I do these black and these natural wood, or should I do it the other way? Should these be natural wood? No, they'll be covered. Hmm, I wonder if I should paint it just to protect it because I'm gonna put it outside. Ooh, that, that is where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna paint it no matter what to protect it because I'm putting it outside and everything I've put outside so far, I have painted. So I am literally just gonna put some of this on here. So I have like a paint tray to work from. And then I guess I have enough space over here, I think I do, to paint these two guys and put them right there. So. One of the questions you guys have asked me often about this subscription is, how hard is it? Have you done it? And I used to do them all the time. Then, you know, I'm at that busy stage with being a mom where I'm not doing things for myself, which is not good. I've got to reprioritize that. So I'm gonna do my next project with you guys. So then I hopped on here and I'm doing this. I have one other that we've been saving because my youngest wants to do it with me and I think it's an excellent mommy-daughter date. Cheap, easy, we make little fun drinks and then we sit and do our project. So uh, just from painting tips, once you're done painting like this, you're gonna wanna go top to bottom and drag it all the way down so you have one cohesive brush stroke. You will ensure that you have no brush lines on it. So looks good.
All right, we're just gonna have a true confession here. The bag thing didn't work out for me. My bag is way too flimsy to really shake my balls around in. So I'm using my hands. It hasn't failed me in the past. Literally, I'm adult finger painting. I also wanna add, it is a lot of fun. The paint rinses off really easy, so like, don't panic. I have paint on my fingers and I, want it to be a little bit smoother and I'm like covering up the spots that are showing and then I'm just setting them right back down. The results are awesome. I love, love, love the way they look. And like legit, I'm up in here doing some adult finger painting. So if you are trying the bag method and it's just not working for you, dive in and get those hands quote unquote dirty. I'm holding on the top and bottom where those holes are and then I'm just smoothing the paint all the way around. It's giving a nice, even texture, and it looks really good, and I'm able to get rid of any flaws that I don't like and fill in all the spaces to create a perfect little bead. And I admit, it's quite therapeutic. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands and dive into the white ones and see if the same concept works. It really is quite remarkable how forgiving black is. Like even if you like go get your nails done or whatever, if you have a white base, they're like, ooh, white's so hard. And I mean, if you've ever tried to paint your own nails with white, you realize, man, if you paint your nails black, it's like no big deal, quick, easy. But then you get to this white and you would think, you would think it would be the same, right? Why would there be a difference? No, white shows all flaws. It's hard to get smooth. It's hard to edge in. And so I'm super glad I chose white for these beads. Very good choice. So the finger painting concept is not working as well. <laughs> On the white beads, it's like basically reaping the same results as that flimsy bag did for my big balls. I'm gonna go with the brush. See what we think. If we, because once again, my theory is the top and bottom that are covered by the other beads and the strand don't matter. I just need my sides to be stellar. So we'll see. These are much easier to hold, which is also in my theory. Before and after. Can you guess which one I hit up with the brush? Totally, totally recommend the brush. Okay, I used putting a second coat on those as an excuse to think about this guy. And I have decided I do want to do the green as the background. At first I was like, maybe I want to do the black as a background, but I'm gonna do the green. I love this olive color. It's like very refreshing, very springy, and I think it's gonna look really good out there. So I'm gonna do though a very, almost rustic rough way. Am I painting the wrong side? <laughs> I might be painting the wrong side, let's see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look, I started painting the sign. <laughs> Oopsie! Okay, just see. We just make sure we won't stick our fingers in it. I don't know if I wanna paint it in like a manner that is perfect. I'm kinda of thinking I want to paint it like with, with rough edges, like not quite rustic. I don't know. I even thought about adding some water to the paint or adding some white to the paint. I don't know. And then part of me is like, maybe I should paint the frame black in the inside white. Is Am I just looking for an excuse to paint? It's kind of fun. Some of y'all who are really good at crafts, I'm really hoping that y'all chose mimosa and not coffee after watching me do this. <laughs> I might be stressing y'all out. Okay, confession. I've gotten green on the sides twice now. So the whole thing's gonna be green. <laughs> this is why it's a DIY. You get to make your own rules. When we do these really big projects, um, you'll notice on occasion I'm painting, but you won't notice often that I'm painting or I'll paint, be painting, and you'll see Jonathan come up behind me <laughs> and start fixing everything. I'm just not patient enough. Are you patient enough? Like, is it therapeutic? Uh, I mean, some people put on an audiobook, sit down and start painting, and they are one million percent 
in their happy place. Like truly joy filled, happy place. And then I know there's others who are like painting is torture. And then there's us in the middle, which painting isn't torture. It's actually quite fun. We just aren't very good at it. So us painting is torture for other people. You guys notice that all this stuff is real wood. We're painting real wood, which is like super fancy. That's the only reason I think I'm gonna be able to put this stuff outside. If it was some kind of fake whatever, I don't know if it would last. Stencil, towel, and sign. If you are new to stenciling, please watch the video to learn techniques and tricks. That will most definitely be me. And then you assemble your garland and assemble your towel ladder. It's funny how the assembly part is like the easiest for me. Like I can totally resonate with putting this guy together. Okay. While everything was drying, me and my coffee went and washed some dishes, started some laundry, <laughs> visited with the kids. I just kind of let everything dry while I went and knocked out some chores. The sign is still not quite dry, so I went and stuck it outside so the wind could blow. I do want to do the stencil but we're gonna have to wait till that dries. So I figured we'll jump over to the beaded garland. If you've never made a tassel before, watch the video. It's much easier to follow than in written. And that's what this is for. If you have never made a tassel before, it's actually really easy. I am assuming this is how she is doing it. Um, looking at these pictures, it does look like how she's doing it. But you just literally, depending on how big you want it, I usually use four fingers. You just do this, see what I'm doing here? <laughs> You're just rounding it around your fingers over and over and over. Depending on how big you want your tassel, you can decide width wise and thickness wise. Like you could stop there, or I think I'm gonna keep going, y'all know me, more is more, so I want a little bit more in my more. And just go like this. Okay, so then you wanna pinch the top, like so, like in, not in half, like by a third and then start winding it around like this. Oh, I don't have my hot glue gun. Um, yeah, you're gonna need your hot glue gun because when you're done making the top of your tassel, you're going to want to tack it and to try to tie it off is way too hard. So let me actually go run and grab my glue gun and we'll tack it right there. All right, we're gonna set her right here. There we go. Let her warm up a bit. Let's see how many different projects we can have going at the same time. <laughs> We're gonna set the tassel to the side and assemble the ladder while the hot glue gun heats up while those dry. So getting this guy here, big holes towards each other because that's gonna be how these, would we say rungs go in? Don't overly tighten until all three of them are in. I got both of my ends on the top secure. Putting these guys all lined up. And then once they're all a little bit tight, you could really start securing. And actually that might be easier with the screws to have this all lined up and then just screw it tight together. You know what I mean? Voila. It smells so good in here. It smells like wood and fresh paint. It's really nice. And I have to say, I don't know if she breaks it up into two different parts. I didn't finish the video quite yet. I am going to because I've never stenciled before and I'm gonna make sure I get her instructions. But like working on it and then setting everything up to dry and going and getting those, you know, little things I wanted to get done, done. Refilling my coffee and coming back was super pleasant. This is the way to go. This works, but this is like labor. Like you'll earn a bowl of ice cream after using this. I would just grab an electric drill and go. Look at this guy. He looks great. Just because we can, I'm gonna drape this one like this. So you can choose. I usually pull it through like this and then pull it through one more time. So then on this side, it's actually hooked. So you can like grab it and kind of tug on it and use it. 
without it coming off. I think on her, she had it bifolded like this. I usually like a trifold. I like it a little bit skinnier and then just layer them. I think I have decided I am not going to stencil on my towels. I want these to be outdoor towels that can be used and kind of roughened up a little bit. And I feel like if I stencil them, they're going to be too fragile. I am also thinking that I am going to perhaps see about securing this to the wall like this so that it won't fall forward. Love, love, love this. Now, I do want to put the stencil on the sign, but the option was to stencil one of these onto the cloth like you see here. Aren't these so cute? They really did a remarkable, remarkable job. But in the tradition of durability and sturdiness for this being in the outdoor kitchen, I'm gonna leave it like that. I freaking love it. It's gonna look so good. I'm so glad I went with black too. Okay, so let this guy sit down here. We need to string these guys. Oh, we were doing the tassel. Okay, so what you can do is get a pair of scissors, cut on what you're gonna call the back of your tassel. And so you'll have like that one little bitty string where you cut it to make your two parts. Just use your hot glue gun to tack that down so it won't leave or move. So once you put your hot glue on, kind of hold it in place. So I'm picking up my beads, prepping to lay them out for my pattern. And I'm noticing that there is paint in some of the holes so they're not open. I just grabbed a safety pin. You can grab whatever. And I'm literally just scooping like this, wiping on the paper towel. I'm sure leaving it there would be fine. It's not gonna hurt anything, but I wanna make sure that it's easy to string these. And I wanna make sure there's no wet paint. And when you do this, you're kind of exposing the paint. So if you're like me and you got a little bit of paint in the hole of your bead, this is how I'm clearing it out. So far, it's been pretty easy. She may like address all of this in the video. <laughs> what video are we talking about the other day? It might've been my March Project Home DIY. And I was asking you guys, do you like to follow the instructions specifically? Like you will log in and you will follow step by step by step on what you're supposed to do. Or are you gonna just wing it the whole way through, just kind of see what's up, just kind of roll and go wherever you land? Or are you like me and you're right down the middle? Like if you think you've got a plan, you kind of know what you're doing or you're just enjoying what you're doing, you're just gonna keep rolling. But if you hit a point where you're stuck, then you really do want instruction. And that's basically what I've been doing. If I've been running through here and I'm liking what I'm doing and I'm liking the way things are seeing, like earlier I started finger painting, I've been sticking with that. But then like in a minute when I need a stencil, I'm absolutely gonna be hitting up the video to figure out how do I stencil? So another thing you might be noticing is my math is not the greatest. I'm over here like mapping out this pattern and I was off by a few. So I'm gonna rework my pattern, which is two whites, a black, then a green, um, to get these last few guys in. Yeah, okay, here's my pattern. So to make it a little bit easier to thread this through, which I don't think it's gonna be hard, you can put some hot glue on the tip or you can use tape and create like quote unquote a needle. Um, anytime you need to touch hot glue, give it a second, get your fingers wet, you can use water, you can use spit and then mold it. But give it a second to kind of firm up. If you grab it when it's too fresh, it won't firm up. And this should keep your wire from splitting. So look, now at this point, I'm rolling it. I'm like rolling it to create a point. This should keep that wire together, blow on it, let it get nice and firm, and then you can just start threading it through. I would leave this on the spool personally because we don't know how much we're gonna need. Dang, that makes a really long strand. Of course it would, I mean, I don't know why I thought it would be anything else. Uh, a tip, and I'm gonna have to touch up on a couple of mine. Really make sure it's 100% dry because you're touching so much back and forth. If you even hit one wet spot, it transfers. Learned that the hard way, which is fine. I'm totally cool with doing some touch ups. So where's my tassel? You're gonna take this string, or this is what I'm doing at least. I'm, look at me, I'm like, this is what you, I'm just, <laughs> like I know what's up. I'm making this up as I go. I'm going to take this string and tuck it straight through the skinniest part, the top of my tassel. 
and then I'm gonna bring it to the very end and I'm gonna tie it off so that the tassel is attached. And then this is what's really, really cool about tassels. When you're doing it, you're just gonna slide your scissors right here, same thing with making a palm, and you just cut like so. And look, you have a tassel. Same thing with palms. It's super easy. You can make them big, you can make them small. So at this point, I feel like I almost need to stand up. Get your beads all the way to the bottom and then cut some strings so you have extra to work with. Don't cut it too short. It makes tying things off miserable. Give yourself some grace. Then you're gonna do the same thing. You're going to use your four fingers loosely together and wrap like so. The first one or two are tricky, then it gets really easy. There we go. And make your skinny little top real quick with your band. It's gonna hold this guy together. All right, I'm gonna feed this guy through here and tie it off just like on the other side. I made my tassels small, um, but feel free to make like super giant large tassels. If this was an indoor thing, I think I'd be more inclined. You also get to decide if you wanna put spacing in your beads. You know how sometimes I talk about like, I like my beads to have space to move up and down the strings. If I'm decorating with them, I can have a little more leeway. Or you can make them really, really tight where there's very little space in between, um, where they're more structured. You get to decide when you're making your own bead set. Besides the colors, you get to decide the tightness, um, which, Really, is a, it's, it's a small thing, but it's a huge thing when decorating, depending on what you're wanting to do. Once again, these are going outdoors, so I am definitely going for tighter. Did I get them? Cut again. And we are officially tasseled, and mine is done. I love these colors so much. We're gonna do a grand reveal with this guy in just a sec. I love the color scheme. This is like working so well. Let me go grab my little sign, which I have sitting in the sun. We're gonna put on this guy right here and then final reveal at the outdoor kitchen sign is dry and good and ready to go let me pull up that link because i definitely gonna need all the how to's on this one okay she said to cut out my stencil which i which i did it's right here and then she said to go get the sander which she provided in that first kit and to lightly sand my sign Okay, she said to make sure it's sanded good because if it's not sanded good, that will lead to the paint bleeding. So nerve wracking. So I sanded what I think is really good. Then she said to cut the stencil down to size so that it won't shift or move around. It won't be awkward going in. So I cut it down and then she said to adhere the stencil to the back. <gasps> no pressure, but I gotta line it up. It is very whimsically in format, like in the way it's printed. So there's definitely grace. So I just set it in like that. Now I'm gonna press it down really, really good so that it's stuck and hopefully won't bleed. Okay, she said take the paintbrush. I'm gonna cut, see that one stray bristle? I don't want him cramping my vibe. She said, and just paint it. <sighs> I went with white because I did that darker background. You don't have to go with white. When I'm done painting it right here, I'll show it to you. She did say to immediately pull the stencil off. So that is what I will do. I cannot believe I have never stenciled before. Oh man, growing up I did so many crafts. I love crafts, I was the queen of crafts, but I never stenciled things. Uh, painting wasn't really big in my lineup. I did sewing, a lot of creating looming bracelets did you guys loom the bracelets or the oven mitts and the pot holders for your parents because you know the keychains and oven mitts were what they live for right i did all those i made kool-aid purses comment below if you know what a kool-aid purse is i did a lot of things but also at the ripe old age of 10 11 12 i was laying roof and pipe, like underground piping for homes with my dad. I was very, very much like I am today, versatile in my interest. And so, yeah, okay. I don't know that this is right. I don't know that this is wrong. I'm just gonna show you. This is what mine looks like 
with the stencil painted. She said use an X-Acto knife. I don't have one of those in here, so I've got a letter opener. We're gonna roll with that. Peel up the corner, she said, and pull down slightly at an angle is what she did. My heart is high. <laughs> okay. Come on, it looks really, really good. It looks so good. Ah, oh, at the very end, I screwed it up, but we can fix it, it's okay, it's okay. So let me set my stencil here. When I pulled it up, I touched, hold on, let me wipe this off before I mess up again. But the print itself looks so good. So at the very end, when I pulled it up, I touched the top of the frame, so I painted that. But that is such an easy fix. For right now, I'm just gonna wipe like this and then I'll come back in with that black paint and touch up over it. But the actual stencil part really, really worked well. I actually have, we'll use this foam roller. I've had this little bitty paintbrush in here this whole time and now I'm like trying to look for it to use it and I can't find it. But I have a foam brush from my kit. I just, <laughs> we'll just borrow that real quick. Like it never happened. Oh my gosh, y'all, that was actually quite easy. And this, <laughs> this is so me, this is so me. You know how I first started painting on the back thinking it was the front? And now I did it upside down. Look at the logo. It's just me. It's the way I work. I am, I mean, y'all see me when I'm decorating, like the tags are still left on things. I'm just a little bit, a little bit crazy. Okay, so grand reveal of all three items up next at my outdoor kitchen. Let's go. That was fun. Like, I turned out better than I thought. Once again, this is not my forte. If you are looking for something to do with your daughter or son, maybe your mom, your sister, this is a great one. You could work on it together. This one had three different pieces inside, so you could have split that up, or you could each get your own box. They do prepay discounts, so if you both took out a subscription, like you both say, okay, we're gonna take six months out, we're gonna do these six across the entire year, that would be great quality time. Of course, me as a mom, who's always looking for ways to connect with my daughters, this has been great. This is the first one I've done all by myself, and actually, it was kind of great too. Uh, and depending on what you chose, tell me, what drink did you go with? Did you pour a cup of coffee this morning? Did you, well, I guess some of y'all will be watching at other times. We're releasing this on Sunday morning, so I keep saying this morning. Did you go with the mimosa? Did you run with something else? Share your beverage of choice. If you're like, I don't have a good beverage. Well, I've got a video for that, but of course I do. You can check out the beer, wine, and other drink alternatives haul I just did. It has obviously great beers, great wines, but it has drinks with no alcohol in them as well. Some great poolside finds. I created that because I was sick of seeing best of hauls, but then it was just a listicle of like every wine and beer subscription out there. Mm -mm. This is truly tried, tasted, tested, and approved. That's why there's not many on there. I think there's only eight or nine options before going live. So that's a great one to check out. Okay, should we do this again? Very much not my normal format. I don't do DIY type projects, but that's really relaxing and kind of a great way to start the week. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day. And if you subscribe to the channel, I'm gonna see you guys later. Bye y'all.